Good us, uh, willkommen in einem anderen Fragen's video. Welcome to another exciting video, in this case part 13 of my equipment series of videos, in this case covering French armoured fighting vehicles, specifically French medium tanks. As with my other videos on French armoured fighting vehicles, I'll attempt to provide an overview of the armoured vehicles in the French army in 1940, specifically, in this case, medium tanks. In May 1940, the French only fielded two medium tanks, one in reasonably low numbers, as was being replaced. On the other hand, the number of prototypes and tanks in development was rather large, and by June 1940, the French were throwing everything they could get their hands on into battle, including many of these tanks under development. The French plan of 1926 called for the creation of a light infantry support tank. This led to the development of the existing Renault NC1 prototype, which became the Char D1. 160 vehicles of this type were produced between 1931 and 1935. There were 10 pre-series of 10 vehicles and later 150 standard vehicles that were built. Until 1936, the vehicles were fitted with the Renault FT turrets because the intended casted ST2 turrets were not yet ready. The ST2 turrets were armed with a short 47mm SA-30 and tank gun with a coaxial 7.5mm machine gun. The hull carried a 7.5mm machine gun in the bow. This, the type, did not serve as an infantry support tank as originally intended, but instead were used as France's main battle tank or medium tank of the early 1930s. It was quickly phased out in 1937 because of its mechanical unreliability and relegated to colonial units in North Africa. During the development of this vehicle, the initial ST1 turret type had been rejected, and as a result, a new one had to be developed. Until it was ready, all 160 Char D vehicles were temporarily fitted with the existing Renault FT turrets taken from the Renault FT material reserve, armed with a 37mm gun. When the replacement to the ST1 turret had been developed, in this case called the ST2, this quickly replaced the temporary turrets already fitted. The ST2 turret was armed with a 47mm gun, which gave it reasonable anti-tank capabilities. The ST2 turret had a very complex geometry with many shot traps, as well as being rather awkward for the crew. The army was very critical of this general arrangement, but it could not be rejected as deliveries were already greatly delayed. The first replacement turrets were fitted only in early 1936. In March 1934, after 110 vehicles had been delivered, it had been reported that 17 of these were already worn out and had to be returned to the factory for a complete rebuild. Of the remaining 93, 62 were non-operational because of major defects. The fundamental cause of this was that Renault, the Renault design team intended to solve the problem of how to combine low weight with low cost by applying weak components of inferior steel quality. In 1935, a large maintenance program was started to improve the Char D1's mechanical reliability. Moving to the next tank, in 1930, at a time the Char D1 had not even entered production, the Renault company agreed to build a better armoured version called the Char D2. By not using old-fashioned rivets, it was hoped to save weight. The tank should have had the potential to serve as an alternative in the role of a battle tank for the heavier Char B, if required in addition. That was also a possible design objective of this vehicle, which was never realised. Organisational difficulties with Renault caused the actual production of the first series of 50 to be delayed to the years between 1936 and 1937. A second series of 50 were ordered in 1938, despite indication that the type was mechanically unreliable, as a possible cheaper addition to the expensive Char B1, although this tank was never deployed in the DCR divisions. With the latter type, in case of war, only a limited number of armour divisions for the infantry arm could be raised. The Char D2 created the prospect of increasing this number, which was one reason why it was relegated to the role of either medium tank or heavy tank. Due to Renault's financial problems, the second, partially improved version was only completed in early 1940, bringing total production to 100. In essence, the Char D2 was an improved Char D1. Like the Char D1, there was a crew of three, but the radio telegraphic operator sat to the right of the driver instead of the commander, and the antenna of the ER-52 set had to be moved to a position next to him. To make room, a hull machine gun was absent. 
This new configuration had been demanded by the army to create a roomier fighting compartment. The commander was the sole occupant of the APX-1 turret, acting also as a gunner and loader for the 47mm SA-37 or 34 gun, which had a limited anti-tank capability, and the optional coaxial 7.5mm machine gun. The gun could fire two types of ammunition, a HE called the Obus D with a shell weight of 1250 grams and a muzzle velocity of 490 metres per second, and an APHE shell, the Obus B model 1932, with a shell weight of 1410 grams, an explosive charge of 142 grams and a muzzle velocity of 480 metres per second. The first 50 vehicles were delivered between 9th of May 1936 and the 23rd of February 1937. The Ministry of Defence decided on the 10th of April 1937 to place a second order of 50 vehicles. The second production series featured several improvements. The most important of these was the fitting of the APX-4 turret, equipped with a longer SA-35 gun, which was, had a far better anti-tank capability with about twice the original armour penetration, mainly due to the longer cartridge and higher muzzle velocity. Due, due to the longer round, the ammunition load had decreased to 180, 108 rounds. Analogous to the Char B1 BIS designation for the similar improved Char B1 version, some internal unit documentation in 1940 began to refer to this second series as the Char D2 BIS, but this was never an official name. The D2s, or the Char D2s, were organised into 13 tank companies, with a battalion consisting of 44 D2s in total. Each DLM division would have had two such battalions. These tanks were replaced with the S35 when they became available, but may have been fielded in May 1940 in some cases. Let's move to the next tank, the AMX-34, which was a French tank originally built for the French Army's cavalry units. Its production was cut short, and only a few vehicles were produced out of the batch and available for the Battle of France in the Second World War. While actually light tanks, they were utilised as medium cavalry tanks, which is why they're placed in this video. The AMC-34 is a small vehicle with a length of 3.98 metres and a width of 2.07 metres. The suspension of the prototype is identical to that of the AMR-33. The production vehicle used a type that was originally envisaged for the AMR-35, a central bogey with a vertical spring, two other wheels in front and behind, with an oil-damping horizontal spring. Twelve pre-series vehicles were built using the FT turret armed with a 37mm gun. None of these vehicles ever saw service as they were considered unsuitable. France, however, had such a dearth of modern tanks that it could not afford to forget the 12 pre-series vehicles. In January 1936, they were taken into use with the 4th Cuirassiers as first fitted with gun turrets removed from the Renault FT, as indicated before, and then later upgraded with the APX-1 turret, which was also used for the Char D2, armed with the SA-34 47mm gun. By 1937, the growing production of more modern tanks allowed the AMC-34 hulls to be shipped from France to Morocco to be used by the 1st Regiment of Chasseurs d'Africa, which received them on the 15th of December 1937. They were at the time the most modern armoured vehicles in the colonies, but were refitted with the two-man APX-2 turret armed with a 25mm gun. It took many months before 25mm guns could be fitted, until that time, the tanks drove around with just the 7.5mm machine gun. The ACC-38 was a prototype tank only, armed with a 25mm and or a 47mm gun. It eventually became the AMC-35. The ACC-38, or more correctly, the ACG-1-25, was the prototype of the AMC-35, armed with a 25mm gun. But as there were few 25mm guns available, it was decided to use an alternative weapon. Finally, the ACC-38, the final prototype of the AMC-35, was armed with a 47mm gun, which were in plentiful supply. Due to the lack of 25mm guns, the 47 in the end was finally se selected. The AMC-35, also known under a manufacturer's designation, Renault ACG-1, was a French medium cavalry tank. 
It was developed as a result of the change of the specification that had led to the design of the AMC-34, calling for a vehicle that was not only well-armed and mobile, but also well-armoured. Due to a technological and financial problem, the company production was delayed and limited. The AMC-35 was one of the few French tanks of the period featuring a two-man turret. Renault had originally developed the AMC-34 according to the specifications of the French Plan 1931. On June 26, 1934, this plan had changed. It was now demanded that the vehicle attain a maximum speed of 50 km per hour and be immune to any tank guns requiring additional armour and an increased capacity engine. On the 7th of March 1936, a change prototype was delivered by Renault, which who requested that the vehicle should be accepted if it met the new specifications. After all, the AMC-34 had already been accepted for production, and this was nothing but a slightly changed variant, or at least that was the story that Renault put forward. The French Material Commission became suspicious by the fact that the factory designation had been changed from Renault YR to Renault ACG. When the Commission inspected the prototype on the 9th of March, it transpired that it was actually a completely new design. Accordingly, a complete test program was ordered, which was finished on the 27th of November. At that date, the Commission judged that despite many changes, the type was still unfit for service due to its mechanical unreliability. However, already in the spring, the cavalry, worried by the German remilitarization of the Rhineland, had first ordered 17 vehicles and later expanded that order to 50. For political reasons, the Commission did not dare to cancel the order. It accepted the type, noting that it would be highly advisable for test types in future the completing their test program before any orders were made. The first vehicle was received by the cavalry on the 1st of November 1938. The AMC-35 had about the same dimensions as the AMC-34. The prototype had a two-man APX-2 turret with a commander loader on the left and the gunner on the right, fitted with a 25mm SARF fortress gun and a 7.5mm machine gun. As all the 25mm Fortress anti-tank guns were needed in the Maggio line, in the production series the 47mm SA-35 was used instead. The roughly ox octagonal APX-2 turret consisted of car sections welded, riveted and bolted together. The tank carried 122 rounds and about 5,250 machine gun rounds. In May 1940, at first no French units were equipped with the AMC-35. No crews were trained on the type. After the German breakthrough at Sedan, it was decided on the 15th of May to send the entire tank material reserve to the front line. Several ad hoc units were hastily formed. First 12 AMC-35s were used to equip the 11th Group of Cavalry. Then five more informal Corps France motorised formations were formed, each to be equipped with seven tanks. But only five AMC-35s could be made ready for use initially. Seven more were later delivered. The crews reported that the material was unreliable, that is the vehicle, and suffered from an extremely short range in rough terrain. The CFMs fought a delaying action or battle between the rivers Seine and Lorraine. Sorry, the CFMs were the formations which used the AMX-35. The AMX-38 was a prototype French tank designed in 1937 at the AMX Works, designed as AMX's response to the 20-tonne 20 20 -ton tank program initially intended to replace the aging Char D2s. It was faster and heavier alternative to the Renault R35, but in practice um, it was a crossover between a light tank and a medium tank. The AMX-38 was designed to have better mobility than the Char D1, while having the same armour and a small weight increase. It was planned to have a 100 horsepower CLM diesel engine, a 37mm SA-18 gun and a new APX-R turret. When the first prototype was completed at the end of 1939, it differed vastly from the initial design. The vehicle was equipped with a 37mm SA-38 gun and a 7.5mm machine gun. The weight of the first prototype was 13.5 tonnes. It had a 150 HP Asta engine and a power to weight ratio of 9.62 horsepower per tonne. The maximum speed of the first prototype was 25 km an hour. The turret was replaced by one designed by AMX which closely resembled the turret of the FC-M36. The crew consisted of two people, a driver and a commander gunner. The AMX-38's first prototype had proved to be inferior to other current French tanks, 
both in armour and armaments. As a result, the AMX company continued to redesign and improve the AMX 38. In December 1939, the second prototype was constructed. It was armed with the 47mm SA-35 gun, replacing the older 37mm SA-38 gun. The gun had better penetration and could destroy any German tank of the period. Additionally, the frontal armour and hull armour was increased to 60mm, which is in, was impe impenetrable by the standard German 3.7cm Pac-36. The second prototype weighs increased to 16.5 tonnes. The suspension had to be changed and the engine had to be upgraded to a more powerful Aster engine of 160 horsepower. Trials of both prototypes earlier and later were underway when war broke out. The project was abandoned after the fall of France. The AMX-39 was a French prototype medium tank. This pro project, initiated in August 1939 by AMX, was a medium tank of infantry for the infantry equipped with a traditional running gear including 14 road wheels. The AMX-39 had a length of 5.96 metre and its height was 2.56 metre. Its crew was to be composed of four men, a commander and tank gunner, assisted by a loader in the turret, a driver and a radio upper sitting, operator sitting in front of the hull. The principal armour would be the 47mm SA which was the lengthened barrel of the 47mm gun in a turret, which gave it extremely good anti-tank capability. Now we come to the main French medium tank. The Samoa S35 was a French cavalry tank, medium cavalry tank of the Second World War, built from 1936 up until 1940 to equip the armoured divisions of the cavalry. It was for its time a relatively agile medium weight tank, superior in armour and armaments to its French and foreign competitors, such as the contemporary versions of the Panzer Kaffagen III medium tanks. It was constructed from well-sloped, mainly cast armour sections that, however, made it expensive to produce and time-consuming to maintain. The first vehicles produced had the standard APX-1 turret, fitted with the short 47mm SA-34 gun. On March 25th, 1936, the AC-4 design was accepted as the standard medium tank of the cav French cavalry, when the first order for 50 had been made. While the original vehicles were equipped with the 47mm SA-34 gun, the mass-produced vehicles would have the longer SA-35 gun, which provided superior anti-tank capabilities. Originally, a total production of 600 vehicles were planned to provide each of the three cavalry armoured divisions with 200 tanks each. Later, budgetary restraints led to a more gradual and limited procurement. In 1936, the second order was made of 50 units, followed by 100 in 1937, and two orders of 125 each in 1938, resulting in total pre-war orders of 450 units. The first tanks, four tanks of the AC-4 pre-series of the S-35, entered service in January 1936 with the 4th Cuirassier. On the 15th of April 1937, the first two hulls of the main series left the factory. These, produced at the planned rate of 12 per month, still had to be joined with their turrets later. At the end of 1937, the SA-35 gun became available and deliveries of finished tanks of the main production series could begin. On the 15th of January 1938, four of these became operational. By July 1938, 128 hulls had been delivered, but only 96 tanks were complete with turrets. In the spring of 1939, the number of operational tanks had increased to 192, the two armoured divisions of the cavalry having, having obtained their nominal strength. On the 1st of September 1939, the start of the war, 270 had been produced and 246 delivered. On this date, 191 served with the troops, 51 were in depots, and 4 had been sent back to the factory for overhaul. The S-35s were organised into 13 tank companies, with a battalion strength consisting of 44 S-35s in total. Each DLM division would have two such battalions. During the German invasion in 1940, the S-35 was the standard medium tanks, which had replaced, to a large extent, the D-2s. However, due to the emergency, the French deployed everything they could get their hands on. However, these D-2s were normally in ad hoc units of company size. And so I come to close my Part 13 Weapon Series of videos, in this case covering French World War II medium tanks. Alle guten Dingen, kommen zu einem Ende.